Now, the annual dystopian convention of who's who in the ultimate collection of central planners is off and running, of course. And while they toss around fear-mongering over such things as disease, X, and 15-minute cities, you should not be surprised by any of it. After all, these globalist tyrants gathered in Davos, they worked in government, transnational corporations, as well as NGOs, and, and privately behind the curtain and the velvet rope. They've been telling us for a very long time exactly what they intend to do. They've laid out their plans for all to see. They're so audacious, they're fearless. And they think quite correctly, in fact, that the vast majority of the people today are completely clueless and frankly, too stupid to even notice what's happening all around them all the time. You would think after the stark reality of the massive government overreach of the faux COVID pandemic, that the majority of people would have by now figured it out. And maybe more people are waking up, but I still think more people than not remain in the dark and they're there voluntarily because they're pacified. They're being distracted and entertained by a million things that have nothing at all to do with what's really at stake. As I've been telling you, what's at stake in 2024 is everything you care about, everything I care about. It really is that simple and it really is that black and white. Today, that's why those on the left, from Washington to London to The Hague, are in a full-blown five-alarm emergency panic over what is looking more and more likely an inevitable win by Donald Trump on November 5th to take back the White House and become the 47th president of these United States. As an aside to that, let me give you an early warning about Trump's upcoming election victory, one of the most volatile, violent, and dangerous times in American history will be those few weeks of the transition. Between the morning of November the 6th, when they realize he's won, and noon on January 20th, when he takes the oath of office 2025, because if you thought you'd seen the anti-Trump forces work hard so far, you haven't seen anything yet. And that will continue to ratchet up between now and Election Day, too. But after he wins, after he wins, it will not be like anything you've ever seen before, because left-wing Violent extremists from both here at home and those that will come in illegally will unleash a storm like this nation has not seen before. It will be a very rough few weeks. That's my prediction. With the body politic having a violent upheaval trying to stop the inevitable. So right now, the powerful and unprecedented central planners are working furiously to get as much in place as possible during their annual meeting in Davos, where they're mapping out a brave new world where most of us are not really included. And if you think I'm wrong, well, you had better think again. Leading WEF advisors, they like to be called WEFers now, Yuval Harari says rapid advancements in AI and technology in general will soon make people redundant and therefore obsolete and worthy of elimination. But in the meantime, they should keep us just, well, pacified. How? By keeping us stoned and stupid. Listen. Now we see the creation of a new massive class of useless people. As computers become better and better in more and more fields, there is a distinct possibility that computers will outperform us in most tasks and will make humans redundant. And then the big political and economic question of the 21st century will be, what do we need humans for? Or at least, what do we need so many humans for? Do you have an answer in the book? Um, at present, the best guess we have is uh, keep them happy with drugs and computer games. Yep. Drugs and video games. Hmm. Just keep them stoned and stupid, just like I said. Honestly, it's crazy that these people are just coming right out and saying it. Just that brazenly. It's like they don't care, and I guess they don't. And do you think it's a coincidence that all over the Western world, more and more formerly illegal street drugs that are ever more powerful and being legalized and normalized happening every day. I mean, junkies living on the streets passed out of their own filth and they get debit cards from too many states and cities to account here and other perks and bonuses and handouts. Plus, do not overlook the chance for Big Pharma to cash in on some brand new zombie drugs to keep the masses glass-eyed and pacified while they run to the bank with all the money they've made. You see, God has been replaced in America by government and its agents acting like God and demanding the same kind of reverence for the things they do. 
And just like Orwell wrote, quote, in a time of deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act and one that will not go unpunished. I added that part. And remember, last year, just last year, Elon Musk was branded a villain. A villain, he still is. For supporting and unleashing free speech. Oh my gosh, free speech. Back on social media. And he was threatened too. It's too dangerous to allow free speech, apparently. That's the belief anyway. Here's more. After Mr. Musk took over the Twitter with his freedom of speech absolutism, um, we are the protectors of freedom of speech as well. But at the same time, we cannot accept, the, for instance, the, the illegal content online and so on. So uh, our message was clear. We have the rules which, has to, which have to be complied with, and otherwise there will be sanctions. Ah, sanctions. Compliance or sanctions. So, yeah, they're all for free speech, just as long as you're saying the things they want you to say and nothing else, period. And when I tell you they want to replace God with government, that is the central theology they follow and always have. It is the holy grail for them. Government is God.